Hey, this is John Young. Today I'm going to be working with a carport here from Quick Tent, Q U I C Tent.com. Now, this is a 10 by 20 foot, and we're going to be setting it up here. I like to kind of practice and put these things together. In this situation, it's not a permanent structure. While it is a very durable and could be in many locations a permanent structure, in our situation, in our needs, we're not going to be using it that way. We'll be setting it up and using it as a temporary shelter and then taking it down. And one kind of cool thing about this compared to others is that you'll see, if you look right here, I'm gonna, I'll zoom in here, that is a little spring-loaded pin. And that is really how this is held together. You've got your, your different pieces, your angle, your, your, to get the angle of the roof and different things. And these have all got, I'm just gonna open one up here so you can take a look at it. They've got the hole in the spot and it's all designed to basically be quick attached with little to no tools. So you push the little spring spring thing in there, and you push it in a little bit too far. You just push it in, slide it on, and there it is. It is now caught. Now you'll see there's a little loop right here. That's a, an intricate part of this, is that there's a cable that will go through and tie the roof part together. So it's not going to be as flimsy as it could be. Once those cables are on there and cinched up and it has that tension, this is actually a really durable little little device, or little building. Now, each item has a letter. It's got a little sticker on it. And I, I thought, you know, these stickers are probably going to be something that's going to come off really well. Well, actually, they're on there really quite well. They've done a nice job with it. If this is freaking you out that the pieces are identified by the, the sticker, Take a get, a get a marker, a black permanent marker, and just you know put a little C on the pieces or whatever. But they are all labeled. The first thing to do is when you open the box, by the way, take a look at this is what the box looks like. Yeah, the first thing I would recommend is don't panic. There's a lot of stuff here and it's a lot of things going on. There's an instruction manual. And according to some of the reviews, some people have kind of freaked out a little bit about that, saying, is there, are there better instructions? You really, really don't need them because everything is labeled. It has has the numbers of which pieces there are. And in the case of, I'm gonna just actually come bring this right up to you guys. And in, in the case of the, the roof, and that's the only part, you can see that there's using one as kind of the riser and then a two and a four go together to make the, the length of the building. Then you've got your little pieces here that aren't numbered or labeled. Well, they are here. You could see a C on there, and they don't have it there. That's not the end of the world because, let's face it, this has got to go on one end or the other. It can't go in the middle because in the middle, we need one that is more of a T. There, that, that is more of an X, I should say. So I can go through and kind of just spend a little time separating these, and it's like, okay, so this is going to be an end. The A is going to be an end. The B is more of that X, so it's going to be receiving different pipes on each side and on the so yeah there's there's a kind of a method to this process and you just have to kind of take a little time to look at them and figure it out now you'll see that there is a d and a b well if you look at it i've got two b's and one d so that most likely means that the d is for the peak the b are for the the kind of the hips of it and then we have our way down there Looking at our, our other pieces here, we have two C's and we have four A's. Well, what that's gonna tell me is that I need to have two at the peak, so that's probably gonna be the two C pieces. They're going to go at the peak, and then the four A are going to be the hip pieces that'll go on the sides to go from the down from the peak down to this and then down to the ground. It really kind of makes sense if you take a little time with it. Then the other parts is you had the poles, and those are all labeled, and that in the, on the instructions is, is uh, labeled really well. And the last part is you've got the little feet. And that's really not anything that intricate and, and difficult. Now, what I like about this system so far is just looking at it and kind of working through it a little bit is that there's really, again, no tools needed. I'm going to come back over here and show you this. This is, let's see, this is two and four, which make that, that long run to go from the end to the middle to the other end. I'll take it apart. You'll see that there's a little groove right there. I'll turn it a little bit apart. And this side has got that little little kind of dimple in there. They will line up, you line those up, slide them together, and then you turn, and now it's locked, so it's not gonna come apart. Now, other versions of, of tents like this have got holes and, and things, you gotta bolt them together. 
and that is okay, I suppose. Uh, you know, it works well. I mean, you guys have seen my videos where I've done done those. But if I want to do something where I want to do, kind of have a faster assembly and get it together, and once it's together and those little corners are put on it, the, the B and the C and the different ones here, they're going to hold it in position. So it's not going to be something that's going to be turning on its own. It's going to be locked and held together. So really, I'm only needing this little piece held together like this for assembly. Once it's assembled and these things are all connected and, and the pins are popped up, we're good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put this unit together. I'm going to start, we start by assembling the kind of the roof part of it. And then we add the legs and then it's um, you know, roof and you put the, the canopy on it, add the legs and you're kind of good to go. So we're going to kind of do this throughout the video and I'll be kind of sharing a little thoughts as we go along. So let's get on the project. So we're going to start out, we're using two and four. Those go together to create a longer piece. And then we do one. So I'm going to go back to my, my kind of logic with this is that my corner, I have two of the C units. So these are going to be N. So I'm going to need to use one of those. And then I'm going to need to use, I, I'm doing the peak right now. So I've got the peak. And from the peak, I have the ones. I have two of the ones that come in from the sides. So we'll get those two in and push the little pins in. Get that lined up here. Oh, where is it? There it is. Then from the peak, I will use one of the the two and the four. I'm gonna back up just a little bit so you guys can get an idea. And the pins go to the towards the bottom. Obviously, if they go towards the top, that would be bad because then it would be in the way here to interfere with the, the fabric. So we put that in, and there we are with that. Now I need to find my four corner pieces, which are kind of that, that hip area. And those were, we had four of the A's. So that would be what I'm looking for on the end here. And the A is going to mount. That. Keep these plastic bags from blowing all over. There we are. Now I need to, I'm going to assemble the next one the center. Now the center, we need that peak piece, which was D because it was the only one that is a, had a four-way connection or four-way that was a single. There's others, there were B, um, and those are going to be going on the, the shoulders of this. So I'm looking for the D and that will go here. Okay, so now I'm getting gravel in so there's the D, and now I will need to have two more of the ones. Set that down. Now you can see that it's starting to take a little shape here. Now what you could with this is instead of making it a 10 by 20, you could make this 10 by 10. And instead of using that middle piece, I could have put the other end on and used a different, a different type of fabric uh, on that, whatever I'd need to have for that. Throw a tarp over top, whatever. But I could have used something smaller and gone that route for if I had a smaller need. Because as you can see, this kind of goes together pretty quickly. Now I'm using the B, the B coupler. And 
And there are two of those. Now, I need to connect with additional two and four pieces. So I have one right here. And now I'll put my last two and four into place on this section, and then we can work on the, the next round. Okay, our first part of the roof is complete. What we haven't done with it is we haven't put the, the cable in there and tighten that up. And I wanna put the whole thing together first. So we're gonna get the next pieces together and then we put the cable in. So let's get the rest of the pieces. So now I'm going to be assembling the other end piece, which means I've got two A's and these are the ones that are on the kind of the shoulder. And then I have one that is letter C, which will be the peak. Now these are going to be connected by the, let's see, where one. Right here is our one, and this is the C, so this is the peak. So this will be the peak. Let's get those lined up. And I've already assembled the two and the four right there. I'll make sure I have enough room over here. Yeah, I'm almost completely off the screen. And now to attach the top, and I've got the two and the four that are put together here. So I'm going to slide that in on the peak here and get it snapped in. There it is, it's snapped in. And make sure I have enough room. And I can kind of slide it in a little bit and push the pin in and get it locked into place.
And now the final, two and four. Now on this, this connection, this B, there was a little bit of weld that had kind of gotten a little sloppy on the inside of that. So I had to kind of push it together a couple of times to, uh, to get it so it would, it would get tight enough for that, or close enough for that pin to pop up. That was the only connection so far that we've had any kind of problems with. And it was just literally just kind of get it in there and push a little bit harder and it made the pin pop through. So now all connections are made. Everything has the little pins pop through. Now it's time to get the cable out and then tie this all together. Now in the bag are the three cables. And you're kind of you're going to look at this and you're like, okay, so I have three cables, but I only have three of these little tightening buckles here. And you'll be like, how does that work? Well, what they have the, in the plans is that, so I'm going to just take one of the cables, let's let the other is just fall, is that we're going to be wrapping the loops around the two and the four on the bottom on both sides, read on that connection. Then this little guy will be in the middle and we're going to put this up on that little, there's a little eye hook right up in here. And we're going to catch that like that. And we're going to run this on that pipe and this one on the other pipe. And then we can tighten it by tightening this. Let me show you this a little bit what exactly this is. So when you have these two ends and they're kind of secure, you can actually loosen, you can loosen and tighten, and what that will do is it will actually, as I'm turning it right now, and that will actually tighten up the cable and pull everything together. So this is kind of a neat little little buckle system that will be able to pull everything together. So let's go put one on. I'm going to move the camera actually so you get to have a better angle to see what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just slide this off. Put the, I'm going to put the cable over the heavier part of the bracket or this corner bracket. I don't want to put it on that, that little tube. And then I'm going to go straight across and do the other side. And then we'll come back and get that, that hook up there. Okay, now we have our, and then I can pull this up, and it's not, it's not open far, far enough yet. So I can open it up further. Just about. There, now I have it hooked. And then I can turn it the opposite direction. And this really will become a stabilizing force to pull everything together and hold it together. Definitely, definitely stiffens it up tremendously.
And again, so far we've done this whole thing without any tools. So we'll put the next two in. And I think for the middle one, I don't believe it would matter if you're going to go to the left or to the right of the collar. I would just recommend whichever way you're going to do it, is be consistent. Meaning if you're going to go on this side of it, on this one, do the same thing over there. loosen this and you have to make sure that the two are the two ends are kind of stabilized when you're loosening and tightening because yes you can turn you can tighten or loosen just one end but then you're going to have you're going to have a kind of a, a little uneven and it loses some of its some of its flexibility and adjustability and right now I see that one of them is not even with the other one. So I'm going to loosen it on the one so we can make sure that we are doing this as best we can. We're just about there. There we are. And now we can snug it up. So now the cable straps are in and our whole assembly is definitely stiffened up a lot, especially in the left and right, the, the narrow way, definitely stiffen, stiffen these up. The length of it, of course, is you've got just the limitations of it, it being a 20 foot, uh, 10 foot spans, but we're getting there. This is, this is looking really good. We're at the point now where we can go and get the fabric and we can cover it, cover the, cover it with the fabric. The fabric is pretty simple. With the fabric, it is it has little grommets all the way around it. You basically open it up, put it on, and then you have our little bungees that you use to go th to do go through that. Now, I wanted to actually just we're going to look at the, the bungees a little bit more, and uh, I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna put the fabric on yet, but I want to show you the bungees because there's a couple of things with these types of bungees. They are basically something that's meant to hold. If you look at you look at it and you're like, oh, this this isn't going to hold very well. The idea with these is that they need to have tension on them. Once there's tension on them, they will hold, and the little uh, little part doesn't pop out. The little the end that doesn't pop out. Occasionally, I've had situations where I've had these types of bungees and they needed to hold something, but they were a little bit too big. Well, you can actually do something, and you could go around that. An extra time so instead of just going around once like we will for this because this it's going to be tight enough you can see it's nice a nice small but if you needed to you can go around a second time and then you've got that same that same stretch but now it's already around this little little end very well so it's not going to pop up just we use these a lot for different different needs and sometimes they're not the right size and when you have that situation you can go and still use them you just have to use you know do it a little bit differently so the bungee, see right, as an example, that bungee won't hold it because it's not gonna have enough tension on it. But if I go around it a second time, it's more likely, and if I go around it a third time, we're definitely going to hold it. And as you can kind of see, my hands are getting a little dirty from that. They have gloves. They, carry, they send two pair of gloves because it, usually two people would be helping, especially in the next part of the process. But I'm all by myself, so. I'm going to do it as I am. So I've got my final pole, which is pole number three, which is the sidewalls. Now, this is the only part that will take tools in this whole assembly process, because for this one, there's a little nut and bolt, which holds the feet on to the poles. So you just put, drop the foot in there, and you put that little nut and bolt on there, and you tighten those up with your wrench. And then it's ready to put in to place. We're going to just put a few of them together, and then we will get ready to uh, to put the legs on. Now, one little thing: when you put the bolts in, you've got 
your the head of the bolt and you have the nut and there's a little bit of thread showing there. I would recommend putting the threaded end, the threaded side, on the same side as the little pin because the pin is going to go to the inside of the tent. That way, this little threaded part, especially if you tighten it up with the tools, it's going to stick out a little farther and you don't want that out on the fabric side. So we wanna keep this on the inside so make sure that the nut side of your bolt is on the same side of the pull as that pin. So let's do a little parts check and see where we're at. We've got our six legs are put together. The roof is together. We have the cable strapped, the cables are in there. There are a couple of cable, cable clamps in there. I think what these are for is in case the cables slip out of the end, you've got some spare pieces. So there's two of those. Then we have some tiny, tiny little ground anchors. Really, really small. I would suggest you take these and say, wow, these are neat, and put them on your garage sale. There's some, some rope. Okay, so that might be good enough. But the anchors, yeah, this isn't this is acceptable. Or this isn't, and I, it's not, I'm not going to fault the company on this because they're putting something in there that can ship and ship easily. Invest in some different anchors. I'll put a link in the description of some anchors that we've used when we put things up, and then that works really well. If you've got heavy clay soil, you've got lots of rocks, anchors become tough anyway, which you probably, if you have played with it, you know. Any others, you've got some tent stakes that would be able to allow you to stake the feet down when you're putting this up. And these are actually, while they're not super big and or heavy duty, they are helpful because when you're putting the tent up, sometimes it's nice to be able to stake those feet into a location. Then with the bigger anchors, you do that. And truthfully, my preferred is not the rope. It's to literally use ratchet straps. And you'd go from a, a point around a bar down with a ratchet strap, and it's much, much tighter. So we're getting to the point in our instructions. We're going to jump back to this step, and we're going to put the fabric on. And, and get that on there because once it's up in the air, I, I was thinking about it, I don't want to try to throw that fabric over top of that, that peak. So we're going to do that right now. So once I've got it kind of somewhat straightened out a little bit and unfolded, I'll be able to come and find the center, the center part. Of the of the unit, and there in this case, the center is actually not. It isn't. It isn't set where the center is going to have a, a grommet at the very top. So you're going to have to between the two grommets, kind of find that middle spot, and then go through the grommet with the elastic loop, and then catch it on the other side. Once we have that, then we can do the same thing on the other end. And what's kind of nice about it is because of it being using the elastic pieces here, I can adjust as if I don't have it to the left or to the right quite far enough, just giving it a little tug in this early part of the process, I can get it into position of where it needs to be. Now here on the end, on a situation like this, I, they typically, I personally would go and put two in here. Now I'm not sure if their, their plan is for that or not, but I'm doing it that way. So I wanna get one in, and again, I can, uh, I can pull it and adjust, but I wanna have one that holds from one direction, and I want to get one that holds from the other direction. And if I find that I'm four bungees short, well, then I'll go grab some others.
Now the final part is to put the legs on. We've got the bungees on, the tarp is on. Now this is where having a second person would make it a lot easier, but unfortunately I don't have that second person with me today. So we're going to just kind of do it carefully. All right, there it is. We are set, we have shelter. It's a, the tarp situation in this particular one is, is just on the roof. Now they've got different versions that have the sidewalls. And that was one of the things I, why I mentioned with the, the bolts and the nuts is that if you have one with sidewalls, you wanna make sure you're doing it that way. You also don't want to have that on the outside where sometimes you could get caught on it, uh, catch an ankle when you're mowing lawn or something up next to it. Now the, the next steps would be to put, get the legs all straight, make sure everything's straight and they're, they're at the angles they need to be, which pretty much, again, straight up and down. Once we're all in position, we put the, the tent stakes through. I'm on gravel, so it's not going to work here. But you put the tent stakes down to hold the legs, and then you come from up in here with that line. You could go and, and put that line, you know, put that string up and over. You're coming around however you want to do it. And then tie it up here, go to the, the ground anchors and do that. My preference would be I'd put the top of a ratchet strap up here and I'd put an anchor out and I'd put that anchor out a good three feet. If you have it too short, yes, it doesn't have as, have as much of a footprint, but you don't have quite the strength. I put that out about three feet with the ground anchor, put a ratchet strap on there, and then I would get it just to the point where it was holding and not, not snug. Do the same on the other side and then work back and forth and make it so that they're both getting snug at the same time. Because I don't want to have it where I have too much pressure on one side when, I, when I'm dealing with a ratchet strap. And this would really be with any straps. So you're somewhere it's a pull rope locking thing. That's what I, I would use something like that. The rope that's with it is fine for some applications. But for what I would want to do, I think that these are just, just nice things for like a kid's tent. But for this, I would want to have a bigger ground anchor and I would want to have either a rope system where I could pull on it and then it has the catch on it. So then I could kind of really get some force to hold this down. Or again, I'd go with a ratchet strap. We'll put a link in the description below, but you can go out to quicktents, Q-U-I-C-T-E-N-T-S.com, quicktents.com. They've got a variety of different shelters. I like the ease of setup. You only saw one part they needed a tool today, and that was the feet with a little wrench with that, a three-eighths inch, and off we went. It was really quite a simple, and, and really what took us the longest was the bungees and putting those feet on. And once those feet are on, now I can take this down, and it would be just that much quicker to put up the next time. We'll put a link again in the description below. You can go check this out and the, all their different shelters that they have from Quick Tents. Thanks for watching. For more tips and how-to videos, go to weekendhandyman.com.